Why do I love the life of a dairy farmer? <laughs> Jesus, at the moment, it's the wrong time to ask, mate. No, look, I'm just, <laughs> you know, I'm born and bred on a dairy farm. So, yeah, the, just uh, not having someone looking over my shoulder telling me what to do. Yeah, I like working with animals and, yeah, I suppose at the moment, with the way the prices are, it isn't a real good thing to be in, but I'm still doing my own thing and it's probably to bring the kids up more so on the in the country too, mate. Oh, mate, that I've been buying grain off for probably 10 years or more on other farms that I'll share farming on and stuff, uh, approached me about using a, probably because I was battling to pay him some money for some grain that I owed him and he was trying to save me a dollar so I could fix him up. And anyway, it's all worked well for me. The, instead of using chemical fertilizers, we've tried the, the best and, um, yeah, it's probably been one of the, the, the better managerial moves of my career over <laughs> um, It's, yeah, definitely, I couldn't believe it. I'm, I'm a bit, I was a bit of a skeptic too, you know. I couldn't say that I'm a greenie or anything like that, but uh, yeah, you, I've tried a lot of these. There's a lot of different types of organic, so-called organic sprays and, and fertilizers. You know, we've tried the pig manure and it's all a lot cheaper. and. It's easier to handle, but we definitely weren't getting the results we were getting using chemical fertiliser. But um, since I've started using the best, which was spring of 07, so nearly two years, yeah. And I've completely cut out um, chemical fertilisers because we really were battling and um, I was nearly ready to pull the pin. So, mate, yeah, no, I'm stoked. It's really, it's the way to go, I'd say, yeah. You'd be mad not to have a crack at it and try and prove something to yourself and it's hard to, and that's the only way really, I mean you can talk to everyone, and every, everyone's different farm to farm but yeah it's definitely, you know it's made life a lot easier here, it's, you're not got trucks in bogging up the ground and running around like an idiot on your four wheeler putting it out, it's just one pass with you. Um, in with your roundup when you, if you you know you're spraying out to put crops in and and then if I'm doing which I do a bit of now is Cape Weed and Patterson's Curse I just mix with me broadleaf spray so you sort of you're always killing two birds with one stone if you can be fertilising and spraying you know you're laughing aren't you? I've grazed the crop of oats over here three times you know and we've sowed I sowed the same time as my neighbours at the end of February March and. I'm just grazing this one crop here for the third time since March. So what's that? Well, March, April, May, June, July, five and a half months. And there's some of the crops around haven't even been grazed yet. Like, yeah, the, the germination speed's unbelievable, I reckon. Like, definitely making a difference. And, and I mean, and how much of the seed's coming up too. We, we get to have a lot of trouble too here with uh, Oh, what are they called? The, yeah, cockchafers, yeah. They're the ones that we normally have a lot of trouble with in the autumn when we're sowing our crops, and I haven't seen any this year. And it's the same, like I said, about the earth mite, you know. This year's been a great year for it, like. And most of the other farms around me here have sprayed once already, and I know a bloke across the road sprayed, he's sprayed twice, so. And I've seen a, a few, I don't know if it's madness to say it or not, but I've, on, in me oat, loosening an oat crop over here, there's a few earth mite in there, but they're only on the cape weed. So <laughs> I'm serious, mate, they're coming in on the weeds and not touching the grass. There's no doubt at the end of, of spring last year when we cut, the pastures were a, a shitload healthier, you know, and, and, that was, and that's a lot to do with the bugs because in the end you, you don't want to... The earth mite will come again if we get a late frost or something and... Um, they'll get into your clover and ryegrass and you don't really want to spray because you, it's like this by then and it's knocking, knocking over or um, you're just about to cut it and you don't want any residues in your silage or hay. So um, <clears throat> the quality of it last year was just, you know, I haven't seen it like it. The differences I've noticed are, you know, second to none, mate. The, the bugs is one of the major... I grow a great deal of subclover up here and we've spraying, you know, her herbicides, Vlamat and Astound to kill earth mite and loosen flea, you know, normally two or three times a year because they're just that rabid and I haven't, 
you know, everyone's had done one spray, all my neighbours so far this year, and I haven't seen an earth mite on me clover, you know, like. The health of the cows is better, um, and now I reckon they're a little bit more settled when we milk, and normally, because I've cut down so much in the bale feed, and it is a, it's an unsettling time for them if there's not as much in there, but they don't seem to be, you know, they're not pissed off that they're not getting 10 kilos in at the moment, you know, they're only getting four kilos and normally through winter and into spring, if we haven't got a great deal of feed, we'd be feeding them eight or nine kilos. I do milk cows for longer lactations than most and I'd normally, you know, I'm in the top sort of 50 in, in our area where there's 300 or so dairy farmers with the cell count and yeah, there's no doubt we've I'm lactating them for two years, you know, 18 months at the moment, like instead of a 12 month cycle, I'm giving them 18 months in milk and, and then an extra month off when they carve and I'm having no dramas. And the biggest problem with giving them long lactations normally is mastitis, you know, I've got a heap of warnings from the factory that we supply the milk to saying, oh, you can't go milking them for, you'll have trouble with your cell count. And, they like the low cell count milk because it puts froth in the lattes for the people in the city to drink. So, um, yeah, so no, I haven't had any dramas and I've definitely been milking my cows for 18 months straight and my mastitis has been, you know, nil, nil and void, you know, and that's got to do with, I suppose, a lot of the time, the health of the ground because these sacrifice paddocks that you're using, which are like I am at the moment out here, at night they're getting grass and during the day they're just getting silage in a feed shed and walking out into a paddock they get bogged up and they'll sit where they've shit and they'll sit where their milk's leaked and if one cow's crooked she'll get it you know like it becomes an environmental problem with the mastitis so yeah i reckon that, you know it, it, it must have changed things with the old best for sure mate you know, this year i had the best calf and i carved 160 cows in five weeks and I lost one, which was probably my fault because I didn't go out during the one night that I didn't go and check on them. But normally we'd probably get, oh, I'd say 50% of the cows, you'd probably put a, a calcium pack in, you know. A lot of the times they mightn't be gonna go down, but you can see them a bit groggy, so, but I, done, I brought three boxes of the crap this year and I only used one or two bags, you know. I mean, milk fever, there's no doubt that it's probably releasing the, the, the good part, the calcium and the stuff in the ground that's getting into the grass and they're getting more of it. So it's definitely, you know, it's helped with our calving. No doubt, mate, you know, it's the worst time of year for, you know, metabolic diseases with cows is when they calve. And it's probably the only time, so that vet bill question is probably, it's the only time you really have vets is if you've got calving paralysis or, um, trouble with getting a calf out or milk fever, that's when you're calling them, mainly when the cows are calving. And like I said, you know, we calved 160 cows in bloody five weeks and I would think I put one pack in a cow, you know. Didn't get one case of milk fever. And, and you might find you get it a week later when they start, their me metabolism fires up and they start pumping out 30 or 40 litres of milk a day. They'll probably get a, a dose of milk fever then, but I just never. Never seen one wobbly cow this year, you know, apart from a, she's probably a 13 year old cow that had trouble calving and I whacked one in her just for the sake of it, you know. I, I think I've found, you know, too, when the cows are calving that I'm not getting as much, and I don't know if it's to do with it, you know, uh, retained afterbirth, you know. I seem to think the cows just seem to be going along a bit more healthy, you know. I'm not drenched, normally I drench them twice a year while they're lactating and they don't seem to be, you know, and it's only, it's only a rule of thumb. My only, you know, once their asses or whatever are getting a bit dirty looking and, and they're coughing a bit, might be a bit of lungworm or something, you, I'll just drench them for everything. But especially this time of year when the grass they're getting is, you know, it's, it's watery and they're not getting a great deal of fibre, like, because all my hay got burnt. So, yeah, normally they would be spraying the bowl, as the saying goes, mate but they're definitely firmed up with their dung, no doubt at all, mate. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because it's not something that I've sort of, we're thinking about a great deal, but yeah, there's definitely not the, the big wet, it's like green spray paint, you know, in spring and early and, and late winter. So, nah, definitely, mate, yeah, for sure. So something's definitely helping, helping, helping them digest their tucker better. It is definitely getting the more out of the grass and what they, they're probably losing, 
losing a lot less and not just blowing it out the back end. There's no doubt the fat and protein's changed with what I'm feeding. I know what I normally get off this type of feed and what I'm feeding in the bales. Um, you know, it's like a, a quarter of a percent or a bit more, maybe a third of a percent at times um, with the fat and protein. Uh, the leaders, well, like I, I said, with the um, amount of days that I'm milking my cows, normally it's a 300 day lactation and they're out for two months and then calving again. Well, only last year I milked them for 18 months straight and I was drying them off, still doing 25 litres, high fat and protein and um, no trouble with mastitis, you know, like and normally a longer lactating cow, you definitely, the, even the factories will warn you away from it, doing it, letting them lactate for longer, especially, it's all right, one or two cows, but not your whole herd, they, it freshens them up when they carve and they think it's going to keep your cell counts down, well, you know, we're having a great success with long lactating cows, low cell counts and high fat and protein, you know, in the milk. The, 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 the biggest benefit, I, I suppose, like I've said to you, is, is the um, contentment of the cows and them not having to eat as much to, to, be, to be contented. Um, as you can see, they've got more time to play around with, with me than worry about looking for a feed of grass. They can frolic in the paddocks and play with me. <laughs> but... Uh, Go and piss off for a while, yeah. <laughs> Give me the shits. <laughs>